What the heck is culture? Hi, I'm Lisa Jackson, CEO and co-founder of Corporate Culture Pros. I get asked this question all the time, either with a puzzled look when I tell people what I'm doing, or if I tell people what I'm doing and they kind of go, well, what the heck is that? I think the simplest definition of culture is that it is your internal brand. And what I mean by that is that you cannot live outside to your customers what you cannot live on the inside with your employees and talent. For example, have you ever been to a great promising restaurant where the atmosphere was really nice, the location was perfect, the food was good, but the service sucked? You'd think twice about going back unless it was the only restaurant in town. That's culture. Your team or organizational culture will not deliver a consistent, exceptional customer experience if they are not valued and treated as exceptional talent. If strategy is the engine of your business, corporate culture is the fuel and the tires. When built well, an engine powers the business toward its mission and vision. But if the fuel and the tires are poor quality or they're not suited for the car, the car doesn't run or maybe gets in accidents or just stops. Too many leaders believe that if you just build the right strategy, the perfect strategy, the culture will automatically appear and move the vehicle forward. There's great wisdom in choosing very carefully and intentionally the fuel and the tires that will move your vehicle toward its destination. Are you crossing high desert territory? Are you going through over huge mountain passes? You need the right equipment slash culture to deliver the strategy for your business. A great corporate culture is an alchemy of individual spirit and passion and company-wide habits. This is what makes a business greater than the sum of its parts. Culture fuels, 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 fuels your ability to grow and win competitive advantage in your markets more than any other single controllable factor. This fact is supported by multiple studies. Is corporate culture dead? This for sure is a provocative statement. And I can tell you for sure that most employees under 40 are pretty turned off by outdated relics of old school corporate culture, such as bureaucracy, hierarchy, politics, the list goes on. These are cited most frequently as what sends people looking for a new job. And many are still alive and well in most companies. We live in an era where there are currently four, sometimes five generations in the workplace, all with different societal value systems for what work means, what work looks like, and what I want to get out of it. So it's important to consider when thinking about dismantling corporate culture, how not to throw the baby out with the bathwater. What is traditional versus old and outdated? What is new, healthy versus trendy, like the foosball and beer keg version of culture? A large corporation has to manage significant amount of complexity in how it navigates and manages systems, processes, and people. The younger set, commonly cites working in corporate as a great training ground for developing skills, developing one's resume. But corporate culture often loses ground on flexibility, hidden or not hidden bureaucracy, leadership political dynamics that totally derail creativity and empowerment. Entrepreneurial cultures are characterized by flexibility, camaraderie, and a very close connection to the mission and purpose. However, sometimes they lose ground on their ability to scale for growth. The perfect corporate culture that can navigate the coming decade of massive amount of change will combine the best of both of these worlds. Building microcosms of entrepreneurial, flexible, empowered cultures in which people have a deep connection to company purpose, while also combining the ability to cascade decisions making at scale and the accountability that ensures efficient growth. Thus, the modern corporate culture is building or changing the collective habits that help an organization adapt quickly to rapid change, align multiple generations, and serve 
more and more sophisticated and fickle customers. So what are the key enablers of a healthy corporate culture? Number one, why do we exist? Here's the thing. Can everyone cite the company purpose in your organization, whether it's labeled mission or vision? Your core values, do they have any meaning beyond making money? The greater the meaning and clarity of your shared purpose and core values, the fewer reasons you give people to quit. Number two, name it. If you could label your company culture in three words or less, what would it be? Jeff Bezos, CEO of Amazon, famously quipped at one time, our culture is friendly and intense. But if push came to shove, I'd choose intense. The CEO must be the key definer of the culture that they want to create. But too often they leave that to chance or delegate it to other people in the organization. What kind of company do you want to build? Then you answer the question of what kind of culture do you want to create? This is different than core values. Spend some time in your organization choosing the top two to three words that really define and anchor your culture experience and conduct an organizational-wide dialogue that helps people really grab onto that. Defining purpose and your cultural personality, it's only a start, but it's a really good one in the fuzzy, mysterious territory of culture. I hope this has been a useful perspective for you. If this resonates with you, please subscribe to our YouTube channel for Weekly Culture Bites. Download the free leadership report here on the website or grab one of our free toolkits under resources. Thanks for listening. Have a great day.